Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Listen, look at what Jesus said to somebody who was lying down. He said, your sins be forgiven. And the people say, what are you saying? For many of us, that is inferior to miracles. Hallelujah. But he said, your sins be forgiven. In other words, what you need is a blessed hope. You need something higher than this. The thief on the cross, the other ones, you know, he began to harass Jesus and talk and he was unrepentant even on the cross. And the other one said, uh -uh, shut your mouth. We are getting a recompense for what we have done. We are armed robbers. They caught us. They are, they are hanging us on the cross because we stole. But this man is innocent. And Jesus looked at him and said, This day, my goodness, my go all his life of misery became useful by one pronunciation to release him. Can you imagine that? Barabbas stood near the king of kings, the one who could give him blessed hope, yet he did not have it. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the custodian of this blessed hope. Yet he did not receive it. He committed suicide and went to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He went and bought a field with the money and killed himself. The blessed hope. Many times I think about my life. And I'm telling you, I live a very happy life. One of the reasons why I don't worry in my life is because I know that every other thing on earth will only happen if I'm alive. Is that true? The subject of CGPA is over when you go to be with the Lord. If the trumpet sounds now, okay, let me not talk about death. Since you're afraid of death, the trumpet will still sound. The Bible talks about his appearing. The trumpet sounds. Now, I guarantee you I'm out of this place. You just see this mic on the floor. You can come and carry it if you think that what we're saying is joke. Because there are people here who are hearing this and will just laugh. I remember writing a letter to some of my friends and classmates years ago, secondary school classmates. And one of my friends, he studied theater art. He said he saw my rapture entertainment paper, rapture entertainment newsletter. He said he, he saw it, it got to him. I said, don't worry. It will be a newsletter indeed. By the time we check out of this place, brothers and sisters, there is an event called rapture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is not a prophetic event. It is a real event. It will happen. Where human beings will exit this earth, the greatest shock of humanity will happen. So I live my life with eternity in view. Yes, I want to be blessed financially. Yes, I want ministry to expand. Yet, I want this and that to happen. But brothers and sisters, beyond that, that only becomes a worthy pursuit when you know that your eternal security is there. Let me tell you the truth. Satan's ultimate goal is not to make you poor. If that's all his goal, then he has insulted himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan's ultimate goal is not to put curses and spells and witches and wizards. No, that's not Satan's ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to make sure that number one, he terminates the possibility of the blessed hope in your life. When he finds out that there is no room, you are already lost, then he will try to deal with you from the earth realm so you can fraternize with him to secure the fact that you will not make it. Hallelujah. Imagine the nightmare Satan lives with, knowing he has been doomed forever. There is no opportunity for salvation. So every morning I wake up, Satan is afraid. Because the more we advance the kingdom, the more his time of doom comes near. He said, have you come to destroy us before our time? There is a time that is their own. It's for them. It has been earmarked. It's not a secret. They know it. That a dispensation will come where death, hell, and the grave will be casted into the lake of fire. The Bible calls it the second death. 
That is when officially the meter of eternity will start reading. Satan is aware. Satan is aware. That's why the moment you declare the name of the Lord and you commit your life to bringing people into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have declared war on the gates of hell. There are people right here. Listen, I will never make assumptions. There are people here, you are looking at me. You know right now that if the trumpet sounds, the sincere truth is that you do not have this blessed hope. There is no guessing it, brothers and sisters. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I got born again. I think I just know that I love God. Look at me. Come. Madam, are you married? Yes. When? Uh, cry. When exactly was I married? I just know that somehow, somehow, this man used to stroll around and now we have many children. Are you married? Answer me, are you married? People celebrate their wedding anniversaries with joy. True or false? We are 20 years in marriage and they smile. They say, for these 20 years, God has been faithful. Let me tell you something. There are many believers deceiving themselves. They do not have one what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. And number two, they are not taking it seriously. We think about money and every other thing aside from the blessed hope. But tonight, the Lord wants to make all things new. I'm going to take an altar call. I just feel I should stop here and let's take a powerful altar call right now to the shame of the devil. Hallelujah. Listen, there is no playing games. Brothers and sisters, whether you are poor or rich, right now in the church, they say, don't threaten people. Don't teach about anything rapture. Just give them a good reason. <laughs> whether you feel threatened or not, let me tell you the truth. It will happen. Jesus is coming soon. Everything that needs to happen for him to come has happened. The final sign, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom is what we are doing right now. And at every moment, his majesty can come. If you are afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ, it's because you are going to hell. It should be a thing we should rejoice about. And say, Lord, finally, an end comes to this life of misery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone rise on your feet. We are going to take this altar call right now. Please. Let this be a solemn moment. I am, I, am, I am dead serious with what is happening right now. Hallelujah. There are people here who have said, man of God, I love the Lord. I have served the Lord. Some of you may even be preachers. But you are saying sincerely, I am not sure that that blessed hope, there is a condition for it to happen. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not anything that you have to do on your part. You just receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says, for all have seen. All have seen. There's nothing embarrassing about realizing that you probably have not received the gift of salvation. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his one and only begotten son. He said, whosoever, no selection, shall believe in him. Believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. There are people here. Some of you, you have been around church. You, you do a lot of spiritual things. And you have believed that that is a justification. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. And our hope and all our pains will be no more. We will stand and cry, holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore.
Oh, this is the destiny of the church. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. Our hope and all our fears will be no more. And we will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you evermore. Right now, as we sing this song, wherever you are, inside and outside, you need to come and surrender to Jesus. I like you to passionately, like a man running away from fire, find your way to the front right now. Find your way to the front right now. Find your way to the front right now. The moment we raise this song, I like you to come. Mean business with him. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. Don't sit back deceiving yourself. We will stand with the hosts of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. We will stand in the golden city you Jerusalem will be no more and we will and cry holy is the Lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore for the last time now we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you. And adore you forevermore. The saints will sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. That's what we will sing at His feet. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Oh, when this life is over, that's our song. Holy, holy, holy. They that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Standing. Receiving all kinds of crowns of glory. Standing at His Majesty's Where He will tell us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We'll sing holy. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. I know this. That I will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore. Listen. Even if you live to 120 years you hear me you are not going to die young don't be afraid this is not a funeral service we have a covenant of life and prosperity are you hearing what I'm saying what I'm telling you even if you live 200 years one of the interesting things in the Bible is that they will mention a very long age of a man and then they will say and he died he still died Some of you are standing and you are crying. I tell you the truth. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Tonight can be that night. 
I don't care what you have done. I don't care what you... There are some of us who need to rededicate our lives. I just sense that there are still one or two people that need to join them and say, for me, I'm rededicating it. I'm saying, Lord, I surrender everything. I've been stubborn towards the will and the purposes of God. You are part of that inside and outside. Join them quickly as I pray for you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a light that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so. Hallelujah. Those of us in front here, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to the lover of your soul talk to him he died for you the bible says while we were yet sinners as you pray i want you to think about your life in one minute and tell yourself it's over enough of playing games and for all of us who are standing don't think because you are standing it means you should not reflect please in one minute i like everybody to reflect on your life am i living my life in a way that if i see it being replayed I will be glad I live that way. Am I living my life in a way that if I am to watch myself in heaven, I will say, thank you, Jesus. I spent my life on the purposes of the kingdom. Lift your voice and pray. This is serious business tonight. This is why Jesus shed his blood. Please, don't you think we are playing games tonight? This is a very serious issue. If you're under the sound of my voice, you should be thinking about your life very deeply and seriously. No man will stand for you on that day. There is no advocate, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle. He said, books were open. I saw the dead, both small and great. Let what you are hearing tonight not stand against you in the day of judgment. pray those of you in front pray jesus you died for me jesus you died for me i return to you now i return to you jesus son of god I believe in you. I believe in you. That's what you should be saying, those of you kneeling down in front. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I just the voices I like you to hush it from the depths of your heart. Jesus. He said, Whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. Whosoever believes in him. Hallelujah. Those of you in front, I like you to say after me from the depths of your heart. I never forget this day. Some of you are rededicating yourself. Some of you are truly surrendering all. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender every aspect of my life completely to you. I make you Lord of my life. I have run away from you for too long. But tonight, like a prodigal child I return home to you the lover of my soul I return to you wash me with your blood cleanse me make me new give me a new beginning write my name in the Lamb's book of life that when this life is over I will have that blessed hope I declare today 
that I willingly, consciously make Jesus Lord of my life. I'm willing to live by your word in the name of Jesus. Father, what a privilege. What a privilege. I ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that the grace for a new beginning give them in the name of Jesus. For many of them, they have been running like a deer that pants for the water. And tonight they have found salvation. I ask that this will be a genuine desire. That on that day when we all stand, we will see them. I bless you. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I declare that Jesus is Lord of your life. From tonight, grace to walk in righteousness. I cut you away from any lifestyle that is not consistent with the character of the kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A big congratulations to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers in one minute. They'll just have your details and you return back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of us standing, before we continue, there's one more aspect that I must touch and then we'll pray. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Keep me. Go ahead and pray. Keep me. Keep me. Pray. Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Oh, yes. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling in the midst of the pressures and the challenges of life. Keep me. Keep me from falling. He says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. Keep me from falling, that I will serve you all my life. That I will serve you all my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Let's finish up. So there are two dimensions of hope. The first is the blessed hope. And according to Titus chapter 2 verse 13, the blessed hope talks about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that we'll be spending eternity with him in a place of absolute rest. I wrote a song maybe 10, 13 years ago. The coming of the Lord is near And I can hear the sound of the trumpet so loud When the dead in Christ shall rise again And we who are alive will be caught up in glory to a place of rest called heaven called paradise and there we will rejoice forevermore remember writing that song was my communication I've taken God serious all my life and I want to encourage us Stay with God. Stay with God. A time will come where we will be in a place of absolute rest and peace and love forever. Where there will be no wars, no terrorism, no hunger, no issue of jam and wayek, no issue of corruption and death and sickness. And that is our blessed hope. Hallelujah. Absolutely. The second aspect of hope, we'll deal with that now. When your eternity is secured, you can deal with the quality of your life here on earth. And that's what we want to deal with very quickly. The fact that our ultimate hope is beyond this life. 
it's not a guarantee that we should allow the devil to buffet our lives here in the earth realm. The Bible says, having the promise of this life, uh, having the promise, uh, how did he put it now? We're going to get to that scripture. First Timothy, I, I think, we'll get there, we'll get there. Let me just skip it. The second dimension of hope is what the Bible calls hope in this life. Hope in this life. So our hope is not just in heaven alone. We have hope even in this life. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. 1 Timothy media if you can help us. Everyone say hope in this life. Yes. If you are supposed to live 90 years old and you are 25 years now or 30 years, how many more years do you have? At least 60 or 65 years. You don't want it to be 65 years of hopelessness and misery. Hallelujah. So we must have hope even in this life. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. He said, but bodily exercise profited little. For bodily exercise profited little. But godliness is profitable to all things. He said, having the promise and expectation of the life that now is. Huh? And then that which is to come. So, there is a promise of the quality of life that now is. Jesus speaking to the, to the disciples said, No man who has left father or mother or land houses for my sake and for the kingdoms. He said, but he will receive in this life. This and that and that and then in the life to come, life everlasting. There are issues in our life today that we are discouraged about and we must sustain the grace to deal with it. Praise the Lord. We need hope in this life to be able to achieve our goals, to be able to push through the walls of limitations, to be able to overcome challenges and obstacles and to triumph over circumstances. I'll take it again. We need hope in this life so that we can achieve our goals. We can push through the walls of limitations. We can overcome challenges and obstacles and finally triumph over circumstances. These are the two dimensions of hope. One is the blessed hope at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the other is the hope we have that assures us of victory here and now. Praise the Lord. Now very quickly. What is the basis for hope? What is the biblical basis for hope? Let's start with our blessed hope. That means what is the foundation, what is the assurance, what is the condition, what is the basis on which we have our hope. The blessed hope. What gives us assurance that what we call blessed hope is not a lie? What gives us that assurance that we will partake of it? Number one is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ. The first basis for our blessed hope, hope beyond this life, is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that has given us access to eternal life and peace with God. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. So the basis for my spending eternity with God, the basis for that hope that I have is the fact that Jesus died. The sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that today has granted me access to eternal life and peace with God through the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. Hallelujah. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that eternal life comes through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So based on the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ, it gives me a basis for having that blessed hope that truly on account of what Christ has done, I will be able to stand blameless before the throne. Hallelujah. Number two, what gives us the basis for the blessed hope is the words and the prophecies in the Bible which we consider to be true. Revelations 21 verse 1 to 5. Let's rush please. Two major reasons why we have assurance that this blessed hope is true. Number one is that Jesus died and he has given us access. Number two is that the concept of this blessed hope has been written in the Bible and we believe it to be true. I saw a new heaven, Revelation 21. This was the revelation that was given to John the Apostle in the Isle of Patmos. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So John tells us, based on the prophecy in the book, that there was truly a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw it. Are you seeing that now? John saw it. So he's not telling us what an angel told him. John saw it. So it gives us the basis of assurance. I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. We're reading to five. And God shall wipe away their tears. You see where we got the song that we're singing? He shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And God himself tells us in verse five. He said, and he that sat on the throne, not a delegate. He said, behold, I make all things new. And he said, write for these words are true and faithful. So we can believe it. God himself endorsed it. That the concept of this blessed hope against all scientific odds is true. Write it. He said, document it. So that those who will read this prophecy will know that there is truly a blessed hope. Are you blessed? So the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ gives us the basis for our blessed hope. Hallelujah. And then the prophecies of the Bible given and endorsed by God himself further gives us an assurance. So that is the, the, the basis for our blessed hope. What is the basis for our hope in this life then? The second dimension. What gives us assurance that the cancer will die what gives us assurance that you will build the house what gives us assurance that in spite of all of the delays and the frustration in your life you will emerge a champion what gives you assurance that the ministry that looks small today would be of global impact i call them the attributes of god there are three attributes of god that gives us confidence and gives us hope in this life. The first attribute of God that gives us hope in this life is his creative ability. The first attribute of God that becomes the basis for our hope in this life is his creative ability. His ability to make something out of nothing gives us hope. So no matter how hopeless my life is, when I look at that attribute of God, that it is still within his power to make something with no raw material, I know that there is hope for me. So when God says he can change my story, I can believe in and, and hold on to that his attribute. I preached a message, uh, I think it was last year, faith in the faithfulness of God. You can have faith in the attributes of God. I can have faith in the creative ability of God. And the Bible is full of this. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. Just write it. We may not project it. The Bible says verse 2. The earth was dark and void and formless. That was a hopeless situation. 
But then we see the creative power of God. He said, and Elohim said, light be. All of a sudden, he began to recreate the earth out of nothing. If God can recreate the earth out of nothing, it means he can recreate my life no matter what is missing. So that revelation gives me hope to hold on to him. The attribute of God, his creative attributes. In John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, specifically from verse 9 to 12, the entire text of five loaves and two fish, we see the creative ability of God at work. 5,000 men aside women and children, they were hungry. And Andrew saw a young lad having five loaves and two fish. And they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus said, no problem. It's not a hopeless situation when I am there. It is within my power to create. The Bible says he lifted it and he gave thanks. All of a sudden, we saw creation at work again. Hallelujah. Everyone say, God has creative power. Because you see, for many of us, it is difficult to see how God will step in and change your situation. Because the raw material you know to produce that change has been lost. Are you getting my point? How can I have hope that I will give birth to a child when the womb that should, should keep the child has been removed? Are you getting my point? Maybe because of fibroid or something, the womb was, it was removed. I saw it. I know it's gone. Can I still have hope? The creator. The creator. Hallelujah. He said, all I need is your cooperation. The creator. The one who can make, nothing is still a raw material for him. Everyone say, God has creative ability. So there is hope for my life. I think it was here we had a testimony about someone who jam came out. Remember that jam? And there was 100 and something. Hallelujah. 100 and something. And I think after one of the miracle services or so, the person went back to check the jam, confirmed he had 200 and something. The creator. See, let me tell you, the attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. And the one you believe is the one that can work for you. All of the multifaceted attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. I believe every part of him. I believe everything that he can do. So, the attributes of God, the first is his creative ability. It gives us the basis to have hope in this life. Number two is God's restorative ability. His ability to restore. What does it mean to restore? To bring back to life that which is dead. To make perfect that which is imperfect. And to bring back lost opportunities. God is able to do that. God is able to do that. There is an attribute of God that can restore things. So it gives us hope that even when our situations look hopeless, when God steps in, he can restore. In Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 7, just write it. Just write it for time's sake. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7, Ezekiel said that he took me in the spirit of the Lord to a, a valley full of dry bones. Hallelujah. The prophet of God was taken to a valley. The Bible says there were very many and the bones were very dry, meaning they had been there in a long time. And he says, son of man, can these bones live again? And the prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. Speak to these bones. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, at the prophet's word, bones began to be joined to bones. I'd like you to say, God can restore. Say it, God can restore. God can bring back to life that which is dead in my life. God can make perfect that which is imperfect in my life. And God can restore lost opportunities in my life. Oh yes. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen 
shall be restored unto you. Arise. Everything that was lost can be restored. I'd like you to say hallelujah. In John chapter 11, the entire text is from verse 1 to 44. But the part that concerns us is 17 to 27 and 39 to 44. Don't project it because of time. It talks about the story of a man called Lazarus in a place called Bethany. The Bible tells us that Lazarus, one who was greatly beloved of Jesus Christ, Jesus loved him so much. A report got to Jesus and they said, Lazarus whom you love is sick. And Jesus said, don't worry. The sickness is not unto death. Meaning the situation would not be worse than it already is. And when the master speaks, you believe him. But then they return. And Jesus told them, let's go to our brother Lazarus for he sleepeth. And they said, ah, if he sleepeth, it's good for him. And then he came directly. He said, our brother Lazarus is dead. Four days. And the restorer, he was on his way coming. And when Mary saw him, she was angry. She was grieved. And they said, Master, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. He said, but now I know that it's not late. And Jesus said, Lazarus, your brother will arise. There will be restoration. He said, I know. Lazarus, I know you have already been speaking about the blessed hope. I know. And Jesus said, do you not know that I am the resurrection? That means it's not an event. It's a personality. It can happen now for you. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he looked at a stone. Men had concluded. And he said, roll away the stone. Let's review that case. For 10 years, your father's promotion has been delayed. But he said, roll away the stone. You take a step of faith. Show me that you have hope by going to roll away the stone. I will roll it for you. Roll it. If you want me to visit that case, roll away the stone. And they rolled away the stone. And Jesus stood. And in chapter 35, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. He had so much compassion. And he said, Father, I thank you because you hear me always. And I don't say this because I'm doubting you, paraphrasing, but so that these people will know. And he echoed a voice, the resurrection and the life. He sent a signal that rattled Hades, the place of death, the dead people. And he said, Lazarus. You know why he mentioned Lazarus' name? If he just said, come forth, every dead person would have come to life. And so he mentioned the one he wanted to come. He sent a word. And that word came, passed through the astral realm. And went, and the word like a meter. And it saw the spirit of Lazarus. And he said, the master calleth. That's how rapture will happen. The blast of the trumpet will rattle through the gates of the spirit. And the doors of life will open. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, they saw a man coming out. And he said, take off those grave clothes. Oh, God can restore. Who asks you to close those chapters in your life? Am I speaking to you? Who asks you to close the chapters? There are people who do not even confront certain issues again because they have closed it. But tonight the Lord is saying, open it up. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I gave you a prophetic word, but it is November right now. Can that word still come to pass? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, I have learned from experience and I have learned in my life that all we need to do, listen, the manifestation of your miracle does not take time. It is the process of preparation that takes time. For about 12 years, Joseph was being trained. But in one night, he slept a prisoner and woke up a prime minister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In one night, Hadassah, Esther, for one year, she kept preparing. Listen, the fact that you are going through a period of pruning, a period of waiting does not mean God is not moving. 
if you think he's too slow you want to move faster than him and you will complicate your journey wait in one night god changed the story of a nation the prophet said by this time tomorrow even if he said by this time next year it will be fair enough but he said tomorrow 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 someone is sitting here tonight by tomorrow night you will sit down with your hand on your head and you'll be saying my lord i didn't know i was this close i was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it that's the testimony of many people now listen you are you have come so close you've been enduring for years but now that you are about to break open the gates of destiny many of us want to turn back i want you to know that the restoration ability of god is still in force are you hearing what i'm saying i almost can't go i was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see oh listen let me tell you something i trust the lord something happened to us a very interesting story i won't give you all the details happened to us at the airport when we we're traveling some things came up there were lots of complications and it was going to affect our tickets and all of that and you know we were a bit concerned because i think there was issue of overbooking and so on and so forth and we had to make sure that we arrived on time and all of that and humanly speaking humanly speaking at a point in fact about 30 minutes 30 minutes to the time that we eventually secured the tickets there was all hope was lost they told us there's no room again this and that and that has happened so that they, they were there had to be changes and there was no human way i called the guys and i said guys this is the situation we're in now if things get bad this and that and that this is worse let's just prepare for the worst but god is faithful let me tell you something it did not take more than 10 minutes before they wrote all of the tickets is that true we're the last to, to get into the flight hallelujah they were standing i'm not sure they were even aware you see that and they just the tick everything was in less than 10 minutes god when god is ready to stand up on your case see when you see god keep quiet papa they boy preached a message when god is silent when god is silent that's when you should start talking praise him give him room give him space through your your praise and say lord i don't know what you are doing but i know you are doing something take the time to prepare the table because it's going to be a large table there are people who should come take the time when god arises he will scatter it. let me tell you something when it is your season of breakthrough i don't care whether they say courses or yokes or xyz god will stamp everything and open the door and say let me see the man who will stop you for someone if you will just wait a little longer this is the word of the lord the miracle will happen before you celebrate christmas just wait a little longer the mighty god is still alive he told you and he's still faithful oh we judge him faithful it will still happen it will still happen who is god speaking to it will still happen it will still happen one of our brothers here, both him and, the, and his wife, the, the ladies in Osh, Oshas and all of that. I remember when that brother met me. They are married now. They married early this year, I think around April. I remember when that brother met me. And the brother was, you know, he was sharing with me a bit of, about his marriage life and all of that. And I told him, I said, God will bless you and God will do a quick work. Brothers and sisters, within a short time, I was shocked. And if you see the pretty and godly lady, a combination of everything, within and without. Come on, ushers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whereas someone has been searching without the help of God for decades. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody, nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Let's sing it one more time. I searched all over. Come on, 
ability to restore God can restore the job of your father are you hearing what I'm saying God can restore it he can restore it he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the quiet waters he restores my soul he restores my soul God can restore every aspect of your life hallelujah Praise the Lord. He said, I will restore to you the years the canker worm has stolen. The palmer worm and the caterpillar, I will restore. It is within my power to restore. The second attribute of God. In 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's project it very quickly. 2 Kings chapter 6. I want us to hurry up because we'll pray. Wow. We must rush. From now, take up wings. We are going to rush. Hallelujah. 6 verse 1. And the sons of the prophets came to Elisha. Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Verse 2. Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan. And take thence every man a beam. And let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, he said, go ye. In other words, let's increase space. Verse 3. And, and one said, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And so Elisha goes with them. Verse 4. So they went with them. He said, and as they came to Jordan, they were cutting down wood to make the place for their meeting. Five. But as one was felling the beam, what happened? The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, alas, master. It was borrowed. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I need help. I collected this to do the work of God, but it has landed me in trouble. Mm. Verse 6. And the man of God said, Calm down. He said, Where did it fall? There is a God that can restore. Who is God speaking to? And he showed him the place. And he used an insignificant thing. Sorry. A stick that has no relevance and he threw it upon and the Bible says the iron from under started swimming until it came to the top verse 7 therefore he said take it up to you and he took his hand I prophesy to someone in the name that is above all names in a way and a manner you never expected to happen my God will show up for you before the end of this month in the name that is above all names i'm speaking to you there are things that you have lost and only god can give you i stand in under my office and in the name that is above all names i prophesy to you no matter where that axe is it is still in the river it didn't disappear it only left you in the name that is above all names we command that axe head to float please sit down listen look at me the fact that you don't see a thing does not mean it has stopped existing it is there but it is not within your reach it is within the power of the master to call it from wherever it is i hope you understand how many of us can state um i think that's the first law of thermodynamics right what does it say Huh? energy can neither be what nor destroyed is that true that means the concept of disappearance is a mirage it only leaves your sight but is somewhere there mm. the bones were scattered but when the master spoke they found themselves you would have thought it's over hear me let me tell you something armed robbers came to your house and they stole you do not see what they've carried but there are many kinds of it in the earth 
and when the master steps up as a restorer you will see things in dramatic ways come into your life and when God restores he does not give you what you lost he gives you what you lost and what you would have gained if you still had it that's what restoration is if God just gives you what you lost it's called progress not restoration until God gives you plus the balance on top He said, who has believed our report? The third attribute of God, very quickly, that gives us the basis for hope in this life is God's ability to bring acceleration. God's ability, his attribute as a God that can suspend time. He can move beyond time. Move beyond protocols. He can expedite the process of certain things. His ability to bring acceleration. In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46. 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46. The Bible speaks to us about the prophet. Hallelujah. A great prophet of God. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Next verse. We'll read down to 46. And Ahab went to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Camel. Watch this. Ahab ate and drink, and he started running. He had started going, but Elijah seemed to be delayed. He was here sitting. Let's watch what happens. And he cast himself down upon the earth and prayed. 43. And all of that, he told his servant, go and check until seven times, 44. All the time, while those seven times were happening, Ahab was already running. He was already moving ahead. The Bible says, it came to pass that behold, there arises a little cloud like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, okay, right here. Sorry, I, I got it wrong. This is the point where he told Ahab, prepare your chariot, get it down, uh, that the rain stopped in us. So, now he started running, verse 45. The Bible says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So we see that Ahab had gone very far, but the man of God was there, no help. 46. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he gathered up his loins and ran on barefoot. Come on, say speed. A man on barefoot started running. He said he ran before Ahab and he caught up with him down to Jezreel. So it gives us hope that no matter what the delay is, God can, God can give speed to your feet. And you will run and in one month, you will do what has taken men 10 years. 10 years. Brothers and sisters, believe me, it is possible. When God quickens, he said he will make your feet like the hind's feet. His ability to bring acceleration. The Bible tells us how that when Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side, they entered the boat and they started going ahead of him. Is that true? And the Bible says he stayed to pray. They were six hours ahead of Jesus. Six hours ahead. But when he got up, he started walking and within a short time he caught up with them and he was about to overtake them they thought he was a ghost and he walked on water it doesn't have to be the normal process when God steps in he can break protocols are you hearing what I'm saying in John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 but our verse of emphasis is from verse 6 to 10 project verse 6 to 10 for us John chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10 the Bible tells us about a wedding in Cana. And the Bible tells us they took out time to prepare that wedding. It probably took them days to make wine. But that wine finished. They needed a miracle. And something happened. It says, and they were there six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews. Containing two or three, this and that. And then verse 7. And Jesus said, fill the water pots. It does not have to undergo the process of fermentation. There is a spiritual fermentation process that can happen. Come on now. 
Ah, yes, you don't need to wait until it produces all of those things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm. No enzymes, no nothing, no ethanol, no nothing. No, no hydrocarbon, no nothing. A technology in the spirit. Fill the water pots with water and they fill them up to the brim. Verse 8. And he said, draw it out and take it to the governor. Chemical reaction finished. Yield 100%. Are you getting my point? 100%. No waste. Nothing to throw away. No releasing of any CO2 or anything. No. Chemical process finished. Expedited time at once. And he said, draw it out and take it. Verse 9. And when the ruler of the feast tasted the wine, so on the way it became wine at once and he knew not whence it was he said the governor of the feast called the bridegroom verse 10 and he said every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse comes in other words people give their best at the first time but he said why have you kept the good wine until now there is someone here within a short time what you will do men will think you took 10 years to do it but that it happened within days one of our brothers Mukhtar, i think he did his whole his whole project within a short time because they later canceled the whole thing and what he did within two days was greater than what he did in months everybody shout speed shout it again oh god will accelerate your life hallelujah finally before we pray how do we activate hope it must be activated it doesn't just happen three keys and we'll rise up to pray activating hope principle number one total surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you want to activate hope in your life both blessed hope and hope in this life it starts with surrendering to jesus christ Total surrender gives you an eternal consolation that in the end of all things, you will be with Jesus forever. I call it the master hope. The master hope. When you surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you have ultimately activated hope. Scriptural references. Romans 5 verse 2. Don't project. Romans 5 verse 2 and then 1 John 5 verse 13. Talks about us knowing that we have eternal life. So total surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. Number two, how do we activate hope? The power of testimonies. The power of testimonies. The power of testimonies. Psalm 66 verse 16. The power of testimonies. Psalm 66 verse 16. Declaring your testimony activates an assurance in the listeners. The Bible is full of testimonies that many have held on to and seen it reproduced in their lives. Testimonies can reproduce themselves in the lives of the listeners. So every time I testify of what God has done in my life, it activates hope. So someone who is about giving up just hears that God did this. And he said, if God did it, then I will still hold on. Hallelujah. Psalm 66 verse 16 says, Come and hear all ye that fear the Lord, and I will declare what he had done for my soul. I will declare it. I will declare it. In Luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 39. Just give us verse 39. Luke chapter 8 from verse 39. But the whole context is 26 to 39. The Bible speaks to us about the madman in Gadara. Hallelujah. The madman in Gadara. After he was healed, he was blessed. He wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus said, no, go. And the Bible says, return to your house. Jesus was telling him, go and testify. Return to your house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And the Bible says, and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Mm -hmm. 
so he published testimonies are very powerful let me give you two more scriptures psalm 22 verse 22 and psalms 40 verse 9 psalms 22 verse 22 and psalms 40 verse 9 all these scriptures point to the fact that it is important for us to testify in fact the bible says it this way it says and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony your testimony is very important there are many people here god has done too many things for you but nobody knows nobody knows about it hallelujah when they say submit your your names and come and tell us what god has done there are many of us here that have striking testimonies many of us come for counseling and god does remarkable things and we keep quiet i tell you we don't share one over 20 of the remarkable testimonies that happen in this house and through this ministry in fact there are more people who share testimonies outside of koinonia than those who share testimonies here when you share your testimony you you activate hope in the life of people hallelujah praise the lord i'll never forget steve strings i remember one time um he gave a testimony it was a miracle how he got admission in abu he got admission in the third list the first list came out his name was not there the second list came out and his name was not there but he had the testimony of someone when living faith that sunday and the testimony of somebody and the person testified that he went around senate seven times angry and saying lord this is jericho it must fall and when admission list came out his name was there steve string said that's it steve strings went around seven times that list came out his name was there because of testimonies listen many of you have taken the same steps some people took and you got the result but you have kept quiet hallelujah one of our school of ministry people he he came in i think he should be around here and he came he, he sent me a text a very humbling testimony in fact i told him to come over at the school of ministry tomorrow just to share with, with our current students to bless them what God has remarkably done in his life within a short time. God has done too many things for us. And if you will not give him the glory, you will stop seeing his hand in your life. He said, if you will not glorify me, I will raise up stones. Meaning, I will only raise up what will glorify me. Hallelujah. So, the power of testimonies. Number three, and this is where we wrap up tonight. The ministry of prophets of God. How do you activate hope? The ministry of true prophets of God. Not just prophets in office, but men and women of God who stand in prophetic dimensions. Listen to me. This is, this is very important. I want you to listen because we're about to pray. All through scripture, true prophets of God have been dispensers of hope and agents of change. Men have always been God's weapons that he will use to bring hope alive and to create changes in people. Hallelujah. Joseph was the prophet of God that was sent to Egypt to preserve them. Elijah was sent to a widow in Zarephath to preserve her and restore to her what the famine had taken. Elijah was also sent, um, Elisha, was sent to the woman in second kings chapter 4. the bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet they were about to take her children and do trade by battle with them and the woman ran to the prophet and the prophet said what do you have in your house do this and that and that and the woman came out of the situation hallelujah in second kings chapter 5 the story of naaman the bible says naaman was the captain of the of the syrian army he was a great man but he was leprous hallelujah and when they sent him with a letter, the prophet gave an instruction. Go and wash yourself seven times in Jordan. And that was it. The scripture we just shared in 2 Kings chapter 6. The restoration of the axe head by the instruction of a prophet of God. Listen to me. When a people 
lack a prophetic voice when a people or a ministry or a terror a, a, a territory lack true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom will become their experience i'm saying this please get it i will repeat myself when a people when a ministry when a territory lacks true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom becomes their experience again and again and again i'm trying to look for a scripture that just came to my spirit ezekiel 22 verse 30 let's look at something that the prophet said ezekiel 22 verse 30 we're rounding up right now while they project that i'd like you to write ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7 we've read the scripture the value of dry bones it happened to the prophet of god the prophet of god gave an instruction every time you are in need of hope you are in need of change among other principles you engage in is find a true prophet of god he said and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it but i found none so i destroyed the land because there was no man the bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore there must be a voice let me tell you something in every territory and every every society there are prophetic agents that god plans strategically they represent dispensers of hope men who god stamps their voice stamp their words hallelujah Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, the last verse. Hosea chapter 12, the prophet told us something that has become an instruction in the body of Christ. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. He said, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By what? A prophet. Now hold on. It is true that God delivered the people. But their hopes were shattered until a man showed up. They never, it is true that there was prophecy that there would be deliverance for them. But nothing happened until a man, Moses, showed up. The moment that prophet of God appeared, hope was brought back to life. When they saw him, he gathered them and said, people, begin to prepare. You are days away from this captivity and you'll be out. And he went and challenged that 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 god called pharaoh bishop oyedeko said prophets are territorial commanders it's an exact word now it may sound arrogant but it is not it's an election of grace when god calls a man and truly puts a true apostolic and prophetic man to God makes it a point of duty to back you. When you speak in the name of the Lord, he said, I prophesied, but I did it as I was commanded. And he said, hear ye the word of the Lord, spoken to an envoy. He said, believe the Lord. And by a prophet, sorry, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he still preserved them. The ministry of true apostles and prophets of God in the earth has not ended. Contrary to the popular theology that people speak, it has not ended. There are still men and women but you doubt their ministry to your detriment. The Bible says believe the Lord and you shall be established. It says believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Doubt the Lord and refuse to be established. Doubt his prophets and suffer for the rest of your life. It's not idol worship. I know there is an imbalance where men have made themselves gods. But I can tell you, it is part of the program of God to use men to speak in the purposes and the counsel of God. When the prophet Simeon 
held on to Jesus Christ, he began to prophesy to him. There was a prophetess, 84 years she had been in the temple, waiting for the consolation of Israel. She carried Jesus Christ and spoke, and she was ready to die. And Jesus walked, and nothing could kill him until he gave his life by a prophet. He came. Isaiah prophesied, unto us a child is born. By a prophet he came. By a prophet he was preserved. If Jesus Christ needed to subscribe to the true ministry of the prophetic, then you cannot do without it. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. We will pray these three prayer points and I will be prophesying from the depth of my heart. Let hope arise. Rise up on your feet. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy Life. Just sing it once or twice and then I speak about our lives. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your hope. I like you to see the hopeless situation before you and sing this song to his face. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your hope. Oh, it will change. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy life. For the last time now, let hope rise. Let hope. Hallelujah. Three prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord, you are a creator. I need a creative miracle in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Can I have some prayer people behind the mic, please? We have five minutes to pray. Lord, I need a creative miracle. Oh, she brought a creative miracle. I need a creative miracle. I need a creative miracle. Hallelujah. Listen. Prayer point number two. Mention every area where the devil has taken anything and say, Lord, tonight, let there be a restoration. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. Restoration. In finances. Restoration. In family. Pray. Restoration of, of 
opportunity. Command restoration. In your academics. Command restoration. In your home. Command restoration. In your ministry. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. Lord, grant feet, speed to my feet. Listen, listen. Lord, before December, let me accomplish what I have not done from January to now. Lift your voice and pray. Give me speed. Give me speed. If you pray from your heart, God will answer. If you pray from your heart, God will surprise you. If you pray from your heart, supernatural accomplishment by an anointing and the heart of the Lord came upon the altar and the hand of the Lord came upon the altar and the hand of the Lord came upon the altar and the hand of the Lord came upon the altar and the hand and the hand Lord in one month you will do in my life and do my life what has not been done in ten months Lord in one month in one month I believe you oh I believe you in one month oh in one month you will do in my life in one month you will do in my health in one month you will do in my finances what has not been done in ten months Hallelujah. 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 We are still going to pray that prayer point. I'd like you to mention three things that you want to see done before miracle service this month. If you believe, listen, if you don't have faith, it's okay. You can stand aside. Just be praying in tongues as we pray. But if I am releasing my faith with you, that three things you are telling God, Lord. I hold on to hope that between now and miracle service week, do it for me. If you believe God, lift your voice and pray. Oh, I believe you. Oh, I believe you. Lord, we believe you. We are believers in this house. 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 You have done it before. You will do it again. You have done it before. You will do it again. We agree as a house that before miracle service, three things, mighty things, mighty visitations, you will do in our life. Three things, mighty things. We believe you. We believe you. Pray. God will do it. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God will do it. My God will do it. Lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. I told you the third key is the true apostolic and prophetic ministry. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what your expectations are. But I know that for God to have brought this message, there are people who need a miracle desperately. And it will take a prophetic word. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name that is above all names if you take me as a servant of God in the name that is above all names I speak over the situation that has challenged your life if I be a man of God between now and the end of this month it must answer to the name of Jesus. Amen. It must answer to the name of Jesus. Amen. It must answer to the Amen. name of Jesus. It must answer Amen. to the name of Jesus. Amen. I come tonight in the name of the Lord, the captain of our salvation. I come in the name of the one who is the multi breasted one who said, Is there anything too hard? And I invoke the powers of the heavens. I decree and declare in the name that is above all names lord i prophesy let miracles erupt in the lives of your people Amen. let miracles erupt in the lives of your people Amen. receive financial miracles Amen. in one month someone here will get a financial harvest Amen. that january to october has not given you I prophesy it in the name of Jesus in one month someone will give you a gift before miracle service that no man has given you in your entire life for someone here you will hear a testimony from home that you have never had all your life hallelujah there are some of us who have been trusting God for specific things. And as it is humanly speaking, it doesn't look like you have what it takes to get it. But in the name of Jesus, may the hand of the Lord come upon you tonight. Amen. And I prophesy speed. Amen. I prophesy speed. Amen. I prophesy speed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And every power and every force that frustrates the rising of hope in your life, in the name of Jesus, I come under the anointing of the Spirit. I challenge those powers and I command them to let you go now. Amen. The Bible says by a prophet they were preserved. I command that you are preserved. Amen. Your going out and coming in is blessed. We will not hear any report of death. Death will speak to you anywhere you see one of these ones we command you to stay clear Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus and every fear of death every fear of failure that is in you that makes you think you will not see the end of the year the Bible says by a prophet they were preserved I command that you are preserved in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the God that brought you to 2014 will take you into 2015. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, or all these that wasted in noonday. I command that you are preserved. The seal of the blood is upon you. Every altar that invokes your name will invoke fire upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every coven, every altar, that invokes your name or that of your family members what will show up is the fire of the Holy Ghost be blessed in the name of Jesus everything these hands that are lifted said to do I pray in the name of Jesus may they prosper those of you who are walking I prophesy that these two months will be the best time you have had walking this year in the name of the Lord Jesus thank you Jesus those who are trusting God students for where the school fees of next session will come from before miracle service you have your school fees in your account in the name of the Lord Jesus we provoke the ministry of destiny help us before miracle service you return with your testimonies hallelujah Lord Jesus we give you praise this is your first time worshiping with us here this is koinonia and we love you wherever you are please make your way to the front right now we want to pray for you very quickly thank you for coming thank you for coming celebrate them koinonia god bless you
God bless you. No matter how far inside and outside, God bless you. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Let's keep standing. We are rounding up. Let's keep standing, please. Let's keep standing. God bless you. Keep coming. Make your way to the front. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Your life will never be the same, I guarantee you. Your life will never be the same. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.